and I'd like you and Mom to come to dinner tomorrow night. Wait a minute, I'll check with my food taster. <laughs> Helen! Daddy, that's not funny. Especially since I'm making your favorite dish, spaghetti and meatballs. Since when is that my favorite? Since they're having a sale on ground beef at the market. <laughs> <laughs> Ann wants us to come down for dinner tomorrow night. Do we have any plans? I suppose we did. We go to Ann's for dinner. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, I'll see you around seven. There'll just be the four of us. The four of us? Uh-huh, Don's coming. Uh-huh. What do you mean, uh-huh? I thought you liked Don. In what dictionary does uh-huh mean you don't like someone? <laughs> you could be a little more enthusiastic. Okay, how about yippee? Never mind. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. She's seeing an awful lot of that boy. Well, he's intelligent, ambitious, good-looking. What more could a girl ask? She could ask when he's going to ask. <laughs> you mean marriage? You sound like Congress has repealed it. Well, it's not a girl's place to ask. That's why she has a father. <laughs> well, I'm kind of glad he's going to be there tomorrow night. I'd like to know what goes with that boy while he's going with that girl. serious about Anne, but just isn't ready for marriage yet. Then he shouldn't be taking up all of her time. He should give someone else a turn at bat. You know that customer of mine who always orders chicken cacciatore? Mr. Cooper? He's the veal parmesan. <laughs> I mean, Ed Gilder. Owns that big cement factory on Pine Street. Also has a son called Frank, who someday is going to come into all that cement. Oh, well, where does Anne come in? Chicken cacciatore or the cement? Don't make jokes. The boy was in the other day, saw that picture of Ann on the cash register. I thought his eyeballs were going to jump out and break his glasses. <laughs> I told him to call her up if he ever got to New York. And did he? About a dozen times, but she always had a previous appointment. All right, Lou, I can see you're determined to talk to Don. All I ask is you try to be a little subtle about it. What do you think I'm going to do? Just walk in and say, hi, Don, nice to see you. When's the wedding? Is that what you think? No. You might leave out, hi, Don, nice to see you. <laughs> I think this is going to be a real nice evening. I know Daddy can't wait to see you again. What's the matter? He run out of sparring partners up in Brewster? <laughs> oh, Donald, if Daddy didn't like you, you wouldn't be here tonight. Don't you mean he wouldn't be here? No, you wouldn't be here. When Daddy comes to dinner, he assumes complete charge of the guest list. <laughs> oh, I want you to taste this now. Now, tell me if it needs anything. Salt, pepper, anything. Now, be truthful. Ah, uh, just an ice cube. Oh, good. Daddy likes everything nice and hot. Yeah, no comment. Oh, Donald, will you stop it? He likes you. And besides, you'll have Mom and me here. That's three against one. Yeah, how can he lose? <laughs> will you set the table? Use the good dishes. Which ones are the good ones? They all look the same to me. The good ones aren't chipped. <laughs> yeah, that's how you tell. I know. But just remember, Lou, no matter what happens tonight, control yourself. What do you mean, control myself? I'm the most even-tempered man in the world. I know, but just for tonight, let's keep it down to a little less than even. <laughs> that must be them. Will you get it, Donald? Okay. Hi. Hello, Don. Nice to see you. Good evening. Uh, may I take your wrap? Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, Anne will be out in just a second soon as she untangles the spaghetti. <laughs> no hurry. We see her all the time. Not as often as you do, of course. That's a nice jacket. And you? Well, it was about a year ago. <laughs> My wife doesn't know too much about men's fashions. Don got that jacket before he started going steady with Anne. How's your writing coming along? Yeah, you, uh, you must be due for a promotion pretty soon. Well, I just asked for a raise. That's even better. I didn't get it. <laughs> well, I don't know what you're making. 
But I bet it's twice what I got when I was your age. And I was already married. Hi, Daddy. Hey, honey, oh, how are you? Fine, mm. fine, fine. How are you? And you look lovely, just beautiful. Thank you, Daddy. You're all parents. Oh, when I think of that lucky guy somewhere who someday will come along and... Daddy, what are you talking about? Well, I've learned never to ask your father what he's talking about, because he's liable to tell me. <laughs> now I don't know what you're talking about. Look, honey, it's all right to be modest, but, well, let me ask Don. Don, when you walk down the street with Ann, how many guys do you want to punch in the nose for whistling at her? Oh, well, Daddy, so far he hasn't skinned a knuckle. Stop talking like a father, will you? Why not? Don understands. Or he will when he becomes a father. Unless, of course, he intends to remain a bachelor. <laughs> I, I think I'll go in the other room and look at my meatballs. Yeah, I'll, I'll help too. Well, subtle enough? For a bulldozer. I don't know what's the matter with Daddy. He's never been that pushy before. He does give me the feeling he's trying to tell us something. At least you don't have to worry about him not liking you. I was getting used to that worry. I hate to start breaking in a new one. What did I do? Was I rude? Was I vulgar? Did I say anything out of the way? No, you were right on target. I just dropped a few hints. You promised to wait till later. I will, I will. But even Don Drysdale has to warm up. Well, here it is, good or bad. Oh, Listen to it. I only wish I could get it to cook for my restaurant. Oh, Daddy, you haven't even tasted it yet. I sure hope I didn't put too much paprika in it. I know how it sometimes gives you heartburn. Heartburn from paprika? Ridiculous. I always say you have to fight fire with fire. Where'd you get the recipe, darling? It smells wonderful. Where else, Mother? From you. Mmm. <laughs> Delicious. And you'll never have to worry about your husband liking your cooking. It's not a husband or my cooking I'm worried about. <laughs> a perfect dinner. Coffee was just right. And that cake you made, was it your own recipe? The corner bakeries. Clever. A man comes home at night, he doesn't want his wife all tired out from baking all day. Right, Don? Don bought the cake. Uh, like I said, a man comes home at night, he stops at the corner. We heard you, Daddy. I think I'd better clean up the dishes. Would you like to help me, Donald? Yes, yes, I would. Uh, I'll help, too. No, that's all right, Daddy. Now, you just sit down and relax. Take it easy. Take a nap. <laughs> oh, Donald, I'm so sorry. This must be so embarrassing for you. It's not your fault. Anyway, I guess that's the way fathers are. Fathers of girls. I just don't know what got him started on this. Never mind what started him. What's going to stop him? Maybe Mother can reason with him. And your mother will help you so Don and I can have a little talk. Oh, Daddy, Donald always helps me with the dishes. Yeah, it's the only exercise I get. <laughs> You've got your whole life ahead of you for that. You can skip one night. <laughs> Mother, can't you do something? I'll help you with the dishes. <laughs> He's going to be so embarrassed. He won't know what to say. Well, most of the time, he'll just be listening. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm going to listen, too. So I'll come right to the point. Uh, excuse me, sir. Can I get you a drink? Anne doesn't keep any liquor in the apartment. Well, I could go out and get some. <laughs> Later, maybe. I only drink when there's something to celebrate. Don, you and Anne have been going together for quite a while. Well, a, a few months. Two or three is a few. Eight is quite a while. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, obviously, you must like her very much, and I think she likes you very much. Yes, sir. That's fine. Uh, now can I get you a drink? Just a minute. <laughs> I have a few questions. It's reached the first plateau. <laughs> first, do you want to marry my daughter? <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> well, sir, I... Now, Daddy, just a minute. Before you go any further, Yes, Don and I are very fond of each other, but at the moment, marriage is the furthest thing from our mind. It's time it got a little closer. <laughs> well, besides, I don't want to get married just yet. I have my career to think about. Why shouldn't an actress get married? In Hollywood, they do it five or six times. <laughs> well, Don has his career, too. Uh, well, it's not only that, sir. Right now, I couldn't support a wife. You see, I want to have plenty of financial security when I get married. Lou, he's right. I agree. As long as he reaches financial security before social security. <laughs> when will you be able to support a wife? Uh, well, a uh, <clears throat> couple of years, I guess. That isn't too long. Of course it isn't. Very well. Why don't you have another cup of coffee and come back again in a couple of years? <laughs> you mean not see each other till then? All right. I'm a reasonable man. I just don't want you taking up all of her time. And to be fair, you shouldn't be taking up all of his time. What does that mean? You should be seeing other boys, and Don should be seeing other girls. 
Uh, well, uh, well, as a matter of fact, I have been seeing other girls. There you are. Now, doesn't that make you happy? You have? Yeah, well, just a couple of days ago, I had a date with one of the girls at the Copacabana. She's in the line. A chorus girl? Did you know about that? Well, no. But I really can't say anything about it. I mean, just last night, I had a date with a friend of mine from the workshop, Jim Carter. And we'll probably have dinner again next Wednesday night. Well, glad to hear it. There's a new show at the Copa. Are you satisfied, Lou? Anne doesn't want to get married, Don can't afford it, and they're both seeing other people. Aren't you going to say something, Daddy? I think you've put too much paprika in the meatballs. <laughs> what an evening. I feel like I've gone through a ringer and I got stuck at my neck. You think we really got your father off that marriage kick? I don't know. With him, you never can tell for sure. Oh, but I'm so glad you came up with that idea about the chorus girl. That was good thinking. Well, actually, it wasn't. I did take her out after the show last week. You did? Yeah. Yeah, I'm doing a story on her. You know, how she got to be a Corrine, the working conditions, where she hopes to go after that, you know, that kind of stuff. Oh. What type of girl is she? Real brassy type, I imagine. Oh, no, 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 no. She's really sweet looking. She's got the cutest southern accent. And she's talented, too. She's just working at the Copa to pay her way through art school. Oh. Well, why didn't you tell me about it? Well, I guess I forgot. You certainly seem to remember enough about her. Oh, honey, now you're not going to get all burnt up just because I happened to have a date and you had to make one up. Who says I had to make one up? I did have something to eat with Jim during one of the rehearsal breaks at the workshop. We've been working on this love scene all afternoon. We just couldn't seem to get it right. Love scene? Mm -hmm. It's this scene about a girl who's saying goodbye to her boyfriend who's going overseas. And when she kisses him farewell, she's just not sure whether she's ever going to see him again. Lovely scene. Kisses him? Mm -hmm. What did you expect us to do? Shake hands? People do kiss and play. All afternoon? Oh, Donald, it was just part of the scene. And after all, it's no worse than her going off with some chorus girl. Well, we just had a sandwich and a cup of coffee, and then I went out to look at her paintings. <laughs> That's a switch. A girl asking a boy up to see her etchings. They were not etchings. They were paintings. And they just happened to be in her apartment. Well, she couldn't very well keep them on a sidewalk. No, but you don't have to shout. I am not shouting. I'm sorry if I don't have the pear-shaped tones of your actor friend. But, of course, I haven't had as much practice puckering up my lips. <laughs> oh, I think maybe my father's right. Maybe we have been seeing too much of each other. Hmm. Well, that can be remedied very easily. Good night. Hello? Oh, hi, Daddy. Anne, I called to explain about last night. We didn't realize how things were with you and Don, that you were seeing other people. And, well, your mother and I are sorry we made such a fuss. I didn't say a word. Why should I be sorry? You weren't sorry your husband made a fool of himself? <laughs> I think you're handling it real smart. You can still see Donald at the same time. Uh, Daddy, you don't really have to worry about that. Donald and I aren't seeing each other anymore. She and Don split up. Oh. Gee, honey, I, I'm really sorry. You could have included me in that. Oh, aren't you glad you have other boyfriends? You can see that fellow from the workshop. No, thanks. I mean the fellow you had dinner with. Daddy, we went Dutch, and I left the tip. Oh. Do you want us to come down and keep you company? Maybe take in a movie? You shouldn't sit around all evening and mope. Oh, I won't. I think I'm going to read, and I'll probably watch a little television. Then I'll go to bed. Well, OK. Call us if you change your mind. OK. Bye, honey. Bye, Daddy. Poor kid. I wonder why she and Don split up. <laughs> you think it was on account of us? Us again. I'm back on the team. <laughs> I know what that girl needs. A date. And I know just the guy. Who are you calling? Ed Gildas, son. What's his name again? Uh, Frank. This time we know Ann hasn't got a previous appointment. <laughs> Uh, flowers for Miss Marie. Oh. Oh, there's no card. Well, if you'll hold the flowers, I'll write one. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry about it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I guess that's one way of settling who apologizes first. Oh, they're beautiful, though. Thank you. I'll put them in some water. Honey, about that chorus girl. I think that southern accent came from South Brooklyn. <laughs> I never realized how boring kissing could be until I kissed Jim Carter in that scene. <laughs> Come here. Now, no more kissing scenes, you hear? Except with me. Okay? Okay. Oh, Donald, let's not have a fight again. Okay. Okay, but it might get a little dull. Oh, I mean, we can still have little fights. That's supposed to be very healthy. Well, I think your father will keep us in the pinky condition. <laughs> Poor Daddy. He really means well. When I told him about our fight, he was going to come over and keep me company. When are you going to tell him the sad news? Not for a couple of days. I want him to think I'm having other dates in the meantime. <laughs> Honey, come on, I'll take you out to dinner. What do you feel like eating? Anything but spaghetti and meatballs. I'll get dressed. I'll put some water in the flowers. I'm going this way. I'll go this way. <laughs> Hello? I'm just fine, thank you. Who is this? <laughs> Frank Gilder, uh, I called you a few times when you were very busy. Yeah, well, your father assured me that tonight you were free. Oh, oh, well, I am, but, uh, uh, uh could you just hold on a minute? Uh-huh. Donald, it's Frank Gilder, one of my father's customers. Daddy told him to call me tonight because he knew I was free. Well, tell him you're sick. I just told him I was fine. <laughs> just hold on a minute, Frank. I, uh, what? Donald, you're a writer. Think of something. What would you do if this came up in one of your stories? Tear it up and start another one. <laughs> you're a big help. Honey, tell him the truth. You have a date with me. I can't. I just told Daddy less than two hours ago that we split up. He'll think I lied to him. So in two hours, we could have unsplit. We made up. No, they don't think we're going together again. Uh, could you just hold on a minute? Uh-huh. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Five cents, please, for the next five minutes. Just a minute. Oh, Donald, it's no use. Why don't I just go out with Frank tonight? It'll just be this once, and it'll keep my father happy. Sure, and it'll keep Frank happy, and maybe even me. What does that mean? I think I'll catch that new show at the Copa. Sorry to keep you waiting, Frank. Oh, yes, yes. Seven will be just fine. Good. Oh, could you hold on a minute? <laughs> All right, Frank. See you at seven. Yes. Bye. Thank you for a lovely evening, Frank. Well, I don't think it really was. For you, I mean. Now, something seemed to be bothering you all through dinner. I hope it wasn't me. Oh, no, Frank. It was me. I just wasn't myself tonight. I don't think my standing was much fun either. <laughs> well, we can try again sometime. Can I see you next week? Oh, well, that's a little too soon. You see, my father doesn't like me to see the same boy too often. Well, good night, Frank. And thank you for a very nice time. I hope I wasn't too much of a drag. Oh, not at all. Well, good night. Good night. May I? Donald, what are you doing here? I didn't have any place to leave the flowers. <laughs> There you are. Drink up. Well, how was the new show at the Copa? Well, I, uh, I wasn't there. Oh. Uh, where'd you go for dinner? Oh, I don't know. Some little place on Madison Avenue. Very nice. But I really wasn't there either, except physically. That's a pretty nice physically. <laughs> Have you been waiting downstairs all this time? Oh, no, no, no. I, I just got here a few minutes ago. Oh. How'd you know I'd be in so early? Well, I figured dinner at 8, an hour and a half to eat, 20 to 30 minutes for the ride back, and you'd be home by 10. You're five minutes late. We got stuck in traffic. <laughs> Suppose I was having a good time and wanted to go dancing. Well, we'd probably have another fight. <laughs> Honey, we can't go on like this. 
I know, Donald. I've been thinking about it ever since you left. And I've made up my mind. There's only one thing to do. Get married? You want to? Eventually. <laughs> to who? Well, who else? <laughs> but... <laughs> I know. You're not ready. And I'm not ready. And my father's just gonna have to accept it. I mean, I love him dearly. But I'm old enough to decide whom I want to date and when I want to get married. Atta girl. You just let me know how you make out. Oh, you'll know as soon as I do. Because we're going to go up there together and tell them. Together? And tell them. That's what she said. She and Don want to talk to you, and they'll be here around five. What could they want to tell me? They're back together again? Don't ask me. I was just talking to myself. Pardon me for eavesdropping. They're going steady again after that talk we had the other night. You know what that could mean? Are you still talking to yourself? Helen, they're coming here to tell us they're getting married. Well, that's what you wanted, isn't it? I just wanted to know Don's intentions. I didn't want to push them into anything. Do you think I could have? <laughs> well, like the song says, seldom was heard a discouraging word. Yeah. If it doesn't work out, who will they blame? You. Why didn't you stop me? <laughs> me stop you? That's a job for the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> Could have tried. Oh, Lou, let's look on the bright side. They're crazy about each other. Now, why shouldn't it work out? Him running around with chorus girls and going out with actors? After they're married? Who's to say with this modern generation? <laughs> Helen, something's got to be done about this, and we're going to do it. Like what? A good general never divulges his plans in advance. Especially when he doesn't have any. <laughs> they're here. OK. Just let me do the talking. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> Hi, oh, Mom. Hi, darling. How pretty you look. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hi, Daddy. Well, I'll get some coffee, and I made some wonderful apple strudel. Oh, that's not necessary, Mother. Oh, why don't you and Daddy just sit down for a minute? Donald and I have something that we want to tell you. We know. <laughs> you do? Well, families have instincts about these things, you know. After the other night, I could see it coming. But, Anne, dear, what's the rush? Well, there's no rush, exactly. It's, it's just that, well, Don and I talked about it last night, and uh, we've decided. Did you really decide, or did I push you into it? Well, sir, I, I must admit uh, you didn't leave us much choice. You're right. I talk too much. <laughs> I should have realized that Anne has a career to think of. What's my career got to do with this? I said lots of actresses get married. I even made a joke about five times. Who needs five sons-in-law? <laughs> Nothing personal, you understand. I'm sorry, sir, but I'm a little confused. Change that little to completely. There's still time to call it off. Remember what they say. Marry in haste, repent at leisure. Yes. Your father doesn't want to do the repenting. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 It's all right. You can laugh at me. I deserve it. I'll laugh, too, if you just forget what you came up here to tell us. Uh, well, I, well, I, well, sir, I, sir, it's, well, it's okay with me. <laughs> Anne, what do you say? Well, uh, why don't we all have some of that apple strudel? <laughs> Sorry, but it isn't often I feel like laughing when I'm thinking about your father. <laughs> Poor Daddy. He was so worried that he was pushing us into getting married. Listen, I wonder what would have happened if we told him the real reason for our visit. Oh, Donald, when he was so serious about doing the right thing, you wouldn't. Of course I wouldn't. Not unless I was eligible for Medicare. <laughs> Come here. Just a minute. What? You might have gotten off the hook with my father, but now I'd like to know. What are your intentions? I intend to kiss you. Not so fast. Do you promise to love, honor, and cherish me as long as I love, honor, and cherish you? I do. And now pronounce us boy and girl. <laughs> 